So for a long time, when I thought about desk setups, I always tried to make it something cool. How many monitors can I have? Basically what's going to look the most impressive. What this led to was mass inefficiencies and overall just not an experience in a workstation that I really enjoyed. Since becoming a parent and having to be nothing but efficient and productive in short amount of time, this is my 2020 desk setup for video editing and everything else. Now first, let's start with what I'm sitting in. This is the Herman Miller Arion. Technically, this is the previous generation and I got it for an insane deal, literally a $1,300 chair for around 200 bucks. And although it may not be as stylish as the much more expensive Embody or even my previous uh, gaming chair, which I loved the look of, for someone who can be sitting in a single chair for hours and hours every day editing videos and doing various tasks having something that has good lumbar support and fully adjustable pretty much everything is a must this chair is definitely the most comfortable chair i've ever sat in now the desk itself is an electronic sit stand desk However, I needed something that was really wide and really big. Now to get the dimensions that I have of a 76 inch long desk, if you bought from a normal uh, stand desk company, would cost you a lot of money. So what I did is actually went to Monoprice and got the electric sit stand desk bottom portion on there for around 200 bucks and then the actual top is from ikea so this is actually just a 76 inch countertop since it is a countertop it also holds up very well for durability although it is ikea it's not one of those cheap wood desk tops that scratches really easily now i used to keep everything on the actual desk including the very heavy mac pro my drobo again multiple monitors and here I tried to minimize things a little bit more and so I'm actually storing the majority of the heavy equipment on a separate stand. Now what this means is I'm actually running all of the cables from my monitors, uh, speakers and everything else on the desk off to the side to the Mac Pro and different power outlets I have hidden. Now to be honest while I love super clean cable management I've never actually really taken the time in the past to do it, but since having a toddler running around, the first time he went under my desk and started pulling at cords, I knew it was time for a change. And so I actually really tried here with some just basic cable management uh, straps. It still could be better. And what's funny is I actually reached out to a couple other YouTubers who are somewhat kings of cable management themselves. And I asked them to rate on a one to 10 scale uh, my cable management for this sit stand desk. Let's actually get into the meat of this here and start talking about what is all in this setup. So starting all the way to the left here, we have the Nomad Base Station Apple Watch Edition. Now you'll see a bunch of Nomad products over here. I absolutely love them. I love the texture, the feel, the leather that they use, and of course, the pretty much matte black everything style going on here. Next up is actually two cables that I keep kind of sticking out underneath the Mac Pro legs. These are two Thunderbolt 3 cables that I use to either charge my iPad as well as plug in my Samsung T5 drives from my different Blackmagic cameras. And then of course we have the 2019 Mac Pro. Now I've already done a couple videos on this so I don't want to dive too deep into it but for those who are curious this is essentially just the 8 core base model with the 8 gig GPU 580X and then I added the second GPU the 5700X which added an additional 16 gigs of video RAM. I added 128 gigs of DDR4 RAM to the additional 32, giving me 160 gigs of RAM. And just recently, I did add a two terabyte NVMe SSD, which I now use to edit current projects on before editing off my Drobo. This finally allows me to play back 6K B-RAW files in Q0 with pretty much no problems. Now moving on to the actual desk, here we have the keypad where you can simply, of course, change the height of the desk. You can create three different presets. So I have one as my sit, two as my stand, and three is kind of just max all the way up. 
and of course your up and down arrows just to make fine adjustments if you wanted to. All the way kind of in the shadows of the back corner is the Apple HomePod. While Siri and the HomePod in general kind of sucks in terms of a assistant still, it's a fantastic speaker. And since my studio space here is technically in our living room, we use it all the time to dance with our kids. And it's nice just for general weather updates. Next up, we have my mic, which I'm testing out the new Shure MV7, which is what you're listening to right now. It is currently on the Throne Max mic stand, which I really like this mic stand. It looks a lot more premium than some of the cheaper options, but it's also not as expensive as the more, well, just expensive options. And of course, all of these products on the desk setup will be linked in the description below for you to check out. This mic, I actually have set up in a really cool way. My favorite feature besides just the ultimate sound quality of it is the fact that you can dual output both XLR, which I have currently running into my Blackmagic Pocket 4K, which we'll get into in a second, as well as it has a USB connection, which allows me to record straight into the computer. The mic has a ton of cool features like a touch sensitive top with LED indicators to change mic levels and change headphone volume, but I'm going to have a whole dedicated review on this mic, so stay tuned and get subscribed for that. Next up we have my speakers. These are the Fluence AI-60s. They're fine. I'm not the biggest audiophile, so I can't speak like an expert on the sound quality. I've obviously used them to edit all of my videos. They're Bluetooth as well as plugged in. And since I always use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to plug into my computer, it is kind of annoying if you have the volume really high and actually stop playing anything and just leave them idle. They kind of have a high pitch ringing noise to them. Personally, I would turn to people like Jonathan Morrison from TLD Today for better speaker recommendations. That being said, they sound good and I like the look of them on the desk, so it fits. Next up, we have my monitor. Now this is something I've gone back and forth on many a time. I have had this monitor now for about six or seven years. It is the LG 31 MU 97 B. This thing boasts a 32 inch 17 by nine 4096 by 2160 4K display. It has 10 bit color, covers 99.5% of the Adobe RGB color gamut and supports DCP P3 digital cinema color standards and a someone who is a intermediate colorist, having something that is 10 bit and supports most of the wider color spaces is incredibly important. Now underneath my monitor, I have my wallet as well as my AirPod Pros nicely tucked inside a Nomad case. In terms of keyboards, I actually really like the Chiclet keys on the latest uh, full Apple keyboards. This one is the one that came with the Mac Pro. I did a whole video on this deluxe keyboard, which I use for shortcuts and editing in DaVinci Resolve, as well as it has a little toggle wheel, which I can use to go around the timeline. This soon will be replaced with the new Blackmagic Speed Editor, which was just recently announced. All the way to the left, I just have the Apple Trackpad 2. This I pretty much solely use for gesture based commands. And for my mouse, I'm actually still using the first generation Logitech MX Master. I've thought about upgrading over the years, but honestly, I have no real complaints. It's the most ergonomical mouse I've ever held in my hands and all the buttons on it are perfect shortcuts for video editors. Now, if you remember from my last setup video, I actually had a smaller monitor in front of my main monitor that I used to keep finder, windows, and different color scopes while editing. And again, I wanted to get rid of the clutter, the mess, and the cables. And so now that I have the newer Mac Pro, I'm running Big Sur. Now I just use the sidecar feature with my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So I just bring that up and now I can just simply extend my desktop onto that, use it to do finder windows, use it to hold my scopes in DaVinci Resolve or sort through a bunch of different footage. When I'm not editing audio on videos and I'm doing color correction or media management, I usually have some sort of YouTube video popping up. Here you can see Knoopsie playing, awesome creator doing his own desk setup video. You should check that out after this one. And now we've gone all the way to the right of the desk and we're ending on what I think is the coolest and kind of main centerpiece of this new setup. As I said before, I have a toddler constantly running around, pulling at cables, light stands, and tripping over things. And so I wanted something that was clean 
and versatile and I could just raise the desk and get out of the way. So here I'm using two newer light stands that clamp to your desk. They're rated to hold up about 10 pounds. And here you can see me fully using a Blackmagic Pocket 4K with a Condor Blue half cage. It completely holds up my Iric Cine lenses, a monitor, and then I have a V-mount battery mounted to the bottom of the base just to save some weight from being all on that ball head at the top. This entire setup would not be possible if I could not complete it with a good light that was small, powerful, and looked good. And so huge shout out to Godox for sending me out their new ML60 light. This thing is a beast in a small package. I mean, if you look at the actual light itself in my hand here, it's not much bigger than a soda can, but it packs the same power that their SL60 watt that everyone knows and loves from Godox. In a much smaller package, you can run up to 50% of the light without any fan, so it's totally silent. And then even when kicking on the fan to go up to 100% of full power, honestly, it's still dead silent and you can't pick it up. It goes all the way from zero to 100%. It's got eight effects built into it, like lightning, cameras and TV flickering. You can run it off an AC adapter, which it comes with, or two NPF970 batteries, making this entire setup extremely portable. I also recommend picking up the Godox AD-S60S softbox. That's what I'm using. It comes with a grid. It looks absolutely beautiful and it comes in such a small package, but again, it is a perfect size as you can see for this desk setup. It's got great reliable color rendering, a CRI of 96 plus and TLCI of 97 plus. So not only does it work for a desk setup like this, but also if you're a run and gun and you just need a really nice, soft, powerful, battery powered light. This thing is the perfect package. Again, all this stuff will be linked in the description below if you want to pick one up for yourselves. And that pretty much does it for the desk setup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of my entire setup. Feel free to leave some critiques, whether it's for cable management or different mounting options. I would love to hear your feedback. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.